Okay, so if you can turn to page five in your functions packet, um, we're going to do number eight together. And then after we do number eight, I'm going to have you go back and do page four and number seven on your own. Okay, so if you take a look at number eight, um, I mean, the directions are on the previous page, but it says to solve each system of equations algebraically and graphically. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by solving this system right here algebraically. Now, the reason it's a system of equations is because we have two equations in two variables. See, both equations contain a y and an x. And what our goal is, is to figure out what values of x and y hold true in both of these two equations. All right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to get either x or y by itself in either one of the two equations. It totally does not matter. OK, so I'm going to get y by itself in this um, second equation here just because, I mean, there's no really, really reason why. It's just easier for me to write on because it's on the bottom. So um, in order to get y by itself, we can just add 3 to both sides of the equation. And these are going to cancel. So what I'm left with is y equals x squared minus 4x plus 3. So what I did was I got y all by itself. Now, since y is all by itself, I mean, the reason we did that is because if we know that y is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 3, we can substitute y in our other equation. See this first equation right here? We could substitute this y with what y is equal to. So, all right, what we're going to do is we're going to take, I'm just going to kind of circle some things. We're going to take what y is equal to, and we're going to substitute it. Okay, I'm just going to substitute it. Um, in for y into the other equation. And, all right, so let's see. So instead of having x minus y equals 1, we'll have x minus this equals 1. Okay, so let me take this x minus and bring it over. And then in place of this y, we're going to put what y is equal to. We're going to put this x squared minus 4x plus 3. And it's really important, since we're subtracting out this y, this y is a trinomial. If we want to show we're subtracting out the whole thing, we have to put that in parentheses. Okay, that way we remember to distribute this minus sign to all the terms. Okay, and then I'm just going to take this minus 1 and bring it over. Okay, so before I go any further, all we did was we got y by itself in one of the equations. You could have gotten x by itself. It totally does not matter. But once we get that variable by itself, we want to take what that variable is equal to and substitute it in for y into the other equation. Now, the reason we did that is because now we have one equation with one variable. If you have only x's or only y's in that equation, in, you, then you can solve for it. Okay, so let's solve this equation. So I'm going to bring my x down. I'm going to distribute the negative to everything. So when I do that, we get a negative x squared, a, a plus 4x, and a minus 3. And I'll bring down the equals 1. All right, so if you want, I mean, you can, you know, combine your like terms. So you'll have these combined. So we'll have a negative x squared and then a plus 5x and then a minus 3 equals 1. Now, you could do one of two things. I mean, I don't really like to have a negative leading coefficient. So if you want, you can bring everything to this side of the equation. That way we have a positive leading coefficient. Or if you want, you can just subtract 1 from both sides. And then you could just divide both sides of the equation by negative 1 to get rid of this leading, this negative in the leading coefficient. I'm going to do that. That way you guys can see something different. So we could subtract 1 from both sides leaving us with negative x squared plus 5x minus 4 equals 0. And again, to get rid of this negative leading coefficient, because we don't like it, you're allowed to divide an equation by whatever you want as long as you divide both sides by the same thing. So if we divide everything by negative 1, we'll have positive x squared, and then we'll have minus, oop, minus 5x, and then we'll have 
plus 4 equals 0. So all I did was I went through and I divided each of these terms by negative 1, so their signs changed. Okay, so from here we could just factor. So two numbers that multiply to positive 4 and add to negative 5 would be negative 4 and negative 1. And we make a t-chart. We wind up with x equals 4 and x equals 1. Now, these are our x values. Okay, when we're solving a system that contains x's and y's, we need to figure out what y values correspond with each of these x values. Now, usually I like to write, like, right underneath the x values I saw for. I like to write under here, but I'm kind of running out of room. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of take these. And I'm going to rewrite my x equals 4 and my x equals 1. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to figure out what y values correspond with each of these x values. So if you go back up, I mean, you can go back to up to any of the equations, but I'm going to go up to this one because y is already by itself. But if you wanted to use this one, you could totally do it. You could use whatever you want. Okay, I'm going to use this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take positive 4 and replace it for each of these x's to see what y is equal to. So we'll have y equals, let me go back to yellow, y equals, instead of x squared, we'll have 4 squared minus 4 times 4 plus 3. Okay, well, 4 squared is 16 minus 4 times 4 is 16, and then plus 3. So 16 minus 16 just cancels, so we're left with y equals 3. So our first point of intersection is 4, 3. Okay, when x equals 4, y equals 3. And make sure you write it in that order, okay? x first, then the y. So this is going to be one of our answers. All right, now let's go back over to this one. So if we take this 1 and substitute it back in for the x's, let's see what y is equal to. So we'll have y equals 1 squared minus 4 times 1 plus 3. All right, so y equals 1 minus 4 plus 3. Well, 1 minus 4 is negative 3, and negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So here, when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 0. So we could write that coordinate as 1 comma 0. So this is our other answer. So I'm just going to kind of like circle these in another color so we, see, so we could see these are our two answers. Now, if you were to take these points and substitute them back into the original equations, so like, for example, 4, 3. If I were to take an x value of 4 and a y value of 3 and substitute it back into these equations here, they should check. I'll just show you real quick. We'll do it just with this point. So if I take 4 and substitute it in for x and 3 and substitute it in for y, 4 minus 3 is equal to 1. All right, in the second equation, if I replace this y with the 3 right here, 3 minus 3 is 0. Okay, and then if I replace these x's with this 4, 4 squared minus 4 times 4 is also equal to 0, so that checks out. If you did the same thing with the second point, 1, 0, you would see that would check as well. Okay, so now we want to take this same system, and we want to um, solve it graphically. So all we're going to do is we're going to graph the first equation, graph the second equation, and we want to find their points of intersection. All right, so usually when you graph a function, you want to get y by itself. So if I take this first equation, which says x minus y equals 1, if I want to get y all by itself, um, all right, I'm actually going to add y to both sides of the equation, leaving me with x equals y plus 1. And then I'm just going to subtract 1. So I'm left with y equals x minus 1. Um, another way you could have done that, I'm just going to kind of go like this. If we start with our original equation, instead of moving the y and moving the 1, you could have subtracted x oops, from both sides of the equation, which leaves you with negative y equals, I'm going to write this as negative x plus 1, and then you can divide by negative 1 which leaves you with y equals positive x minus 1. So either way, you wind up with y equals x minus 1.
Okay, so if you go to y equals in your graphing calculator and plug in x minus 1, you can just go to the table of values and look at, you know, just basically look at a whole bunch of points and copy them down. Um, the other way you could do it, if you remember back from Algebra 1, is this number right here, this negative 1, is called your y-intercept. So what that means is it intersects the y-axis at negative 1. So you can go to negative 1 on the y-axis. It's going to be hard on here. And put a point. And then the number in front of your x is your slope. So technically there's a 1 in front of this x, right? 1 over 1. So the slope would be 1 over 1. So from this point that we already plotted, you would go up 1 over 1 and put another point. Up 1 over 1 and put another point. So you can either do it like that, or if you go to y equals in your calculator and plug in the equation, what you'll see is that we are going to have all of these points. And this does connect to be a line, so I'm going to do my best job to make a line on here. Okay, and then once you get that, just make sure you label it as well. I like to label it in the form y equals, but if you want to go back and label the original equation, x minus y equals 1, you can totally do that. Okay, so let's do the next one. Now, with our second equation, y minus 3 equals x squared minus 4x, in order to get um, the y by itself, you would just add 3 to both sides of the equation. So that would leave you with y equals x squared minus 4x plus 3. Okay, now our first equation, because we had x to the first power and y to the first power, that graphs to be a line, that's linear. Here when you have y to the first power and an x squared, that's going to graph to be a parabola. Okay, We call this a quadratic. If you have a positive leading coefficient, your parabola is going to be positive. It's going to open up like that. And if you have a negative leading coefficient, so if this was, let's say, a negative x squared, your parabola would um, open down like this, okay? So this would be, the bottom one would be negative x squared, the top one would be positive x squared. Okay, so you're just going to go to y equals in your calculator and plug in this equation. And then when you go to the table of values to find some points, I want to make sure you're picking points that, you know, are going to graph to look like a parabola. So what I like to do is, we could tell this is a parabola that opens up. I like to include this very minimum point, our vertex here. And then as long as it fits on the graph, I like to include like three points to the right of it, as well as three points to the left of it. So if you look, if you go into um, y equals and plug in this equation, you could hit pause for a minute. Um, I want you to go to the table of values. And I want you to see if you could find that very minimum point in the y column. And you want to put that uh, pretty much in the middle of your table of values. So you could hit pause and do that. OK, so what you'll notice as you scroll up and down, the very smallest y value that we see is at negative 1. And that's when x equals 2. So if you can, I'd like you to fit, you know, three points, if it fits on the graph, to the right of this, which it actually does. If you graph the next three points in line, when x equals 3, 4, and 5, the y values that go along with this are 0, 3, and 8, which should all fit on the graph. And then if we graph three points to the left of 2, negative 1, so we would have the x values of 1, 0, and negative 1, those y values also should all fit on the graph, right? This would be negative 1, 8, 0, 3 and 1, 0. And what you'll notice is like this point, this y value and this y value match up, this y value and this y value match, same with these, and then we kind of meet in the middle, okay? That's what really makes your parabola symmetric. Okay, so let's plot those points. All right, so I connected the points. Um, I mean, I did my best to do that on here. And then make sure you put arrows to show it keeps going, and then label your equation. Again, I like to label it in the form y equals. But if you want to label the original equation, that's fine as well. OK, now in order to answer the question, what we're really looking for is the points of intersection. So we can see our first point of intersection is right here at 1, 0. And our second point of intersection is right here at 4, 3. And if you go back and look at what we got when we did this algebraically, we got those same exact answers.
Okay, so what I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to flip back to number seven, and I'd like you to try to solve that system algebraically as well as graphically. So I'm going to have you try it algebraically first, and you can hit pause. And then um, when you're done, you can unpause it and check your answer. And then when you're done, I'd like you to try it graphically as well, and then hit pause. And then when you're done doing that, you can hit unpause and check your answer. OK, so um, you should have wound up algebraically um, solving like this, or something like this. I'm getting negative 2, 0, and positive 1, negative 3. I mean, with this one, like in the second equation, y was already by itself. So all you had to do was take what y was equal to and substitute it in. So we would have x plus x squared minus 4 equals negative 2. And I just solved this equation. Okay, I, just subtra I added 2 to both sides. I factored, and these were the x values I got. And then I substituted those x values back into the second equation here in order to solve for y. And I wrote them as x comma y. Okay, so I put the x first and the y second. Okay, so now you could try number seven graphically, and um, when you're, you know, just pause me, and when you're done, you can unpause and see how you did. Okay, so, um, you know, I first got x, I first got y by itself in this equation by just subtracting x from both sides, left me with y equals negative x minus two. You can either go in your calculator to y equals and look at the table of values and plot some points, or you could say, look, my y-intercept is negative two. Let me put a point at Two on negative two on the y-axis, and since my slope is negative one over one, I'm going to go down one over one, down one over one, so that my line is going in the negative direction. And I labeled my equation. And I put arrows, and then um, in the second equation, uh, y is already by itself for you. So you could just go to y equals in the um, in you know in the calculator and just look for you know, the table of values that's going to give you the minimum point in the middle, and then, you know, three points to the left of it, three points to the right of it, and plot them. And you'll see our points of intersection are at negative 2, 0, and at 1, negative 3.